It's easy to forget forklifts are powerful, dangerous vehicles when you're around them all day. It's also easy to take a turn too fast or forget to honk while backing up in the hurry to finish your work. Easy to forget that is until someone gets hurt. On average, 20,000 workers are killed or injured in forklift-related incidents each year. Who is responsible for forklift safety? The safety of pedestrians working around forklifts is shared by the pedestrian and the forklift operator. Forklift accidents happen when pedestrians are either hit by a forklift or a load. It's important for you to remain aware of your surroundings, especially in areas of heavy pedestrian traffic. Forklifts typically operate in confined spaces, which create blind spots and areas of impaired visibility. Now, this course will cover the following areas. Common pedestrian traffic hazards, best safety practices for drivers, best safety practices for pedestrians, and OSHA safety standards. Forklifts maneuver differently than other vehicles. Now, this requires you and other workers to practice awareness of their surroundings. Now, this is known as situational awareness, which is a crucial skill for ensuring workplace safety. Forklifts operate in tight spaces, which increases the hazard of striking an object or a person. You should give pedestrians the right of way. You will need to stop, wait for the person to pass, and then proceed cautiously, especially if the pathways are cluttered or frequently walked. Now, these issues can cause increased hazards for both the driver and pedestrians. To address these hazards, you should always communicate with pedestrians to indicate movement or to warn them of possible hazards. Now, these warnings can be a conversation that can also be done using horns, hand signals, and lights. Most forklift areas are busy and loud, prohibiting conversation. However, you can sound the horn when going around corners, doorways, or narrow aisles. Horns or backing alarms should always be used when operating a forklift in reverse. Utilizing these best practices will reduce the risk of incidents. You should always drive cautiously. Ensure that you slow down, stop, and honk at intersections, corners, and other areas where views are obstructed. Working a forklift in reverse has obvious blind spots. It's important to retain a cautious speed and move slowly. Backup alarms or the use of horns is a requirement for safely operating a forklift in reverse. Speed limits should be posted in working areas, but there are some standards. When working in areas with pedestrians, it's important to limit speed to three miles per hour. Now, why does this matter? Well, it takes time to come to a full stop. At four miles per hour, a forklift would need 17 feet to come to a full stop. At eight miles per hour, that space needed to stop increases to 42 feet. So even if the operator sees the other person early and the pedestrian realizes their danger right away, a collision between the forklift and the pedestrian becomes almost inevitable at higher speeds. When working in an area with pedestrians or tight quarters, you may not have even the space for that 17 feet full stop limitation. Should a pedestrian be unaware and step into the pathway of the forklift, it can become a dangerous situation. Also consider that the forklift will likely be carrying a load, which further reduces its ability to stop smoothly or to avoid an accident. Attempting to avoid a collision at high speeds is also likely to result in a tip over, load instability and severe injury or even death. No one wins in a face-off between a forklift and a pedestrian. Always maintain visibility. The operation of the forklift should be smooth and predictable. Operating quickly or without caution is an increased hazard. Additionally, be aware of pedestrians around the forklift. Do not allow anyone to pass under the lift or load. It's best to make eye contact with pedestrians and other drivers to maintain visibility. Do not assume that eye contact is permission or acknowledgement. Continue to broadcast your movements using lights, hand signals, and your horn. Sometimes it's not possible to maneuver the forklift without assistance. In areas of high traffic or clutter, you should use a spotter. 
The spotter can help to clear the way, use hand signals to direct the forklift, and check that the way is clear through doors or around corners. Common spotter hand signals are, the move back or forward signal is when you raise your left arm straight in front of you with the palm facing out. Use your right arm to indicate moving backward or moving forward. The raising or lowering time signal is done by fully outstretching your arm. Raise your arm to indicate raising tines, lower your arm to indicate lowering tines. The moving tines signal uses your arm to indicate if the tines need to move to the left or to the right. The tilt mass signal is given by a bent arm at the elbow with a thumbs down to indicate tilting the mass down. To indicate tilting the mass up, bend your arm at the elbow and do a thumbs up sign. To pause or dog everything, you bring your hands together, linking your thumbs. This is used when a possible obstruction or problem has been spotted, but has not yet become an issue. The emergency stop signal is when you fully extend both arms and then wave across your body, creating an X. This lets the driver know there is immediate danger. Remember that these are signals that a spotter uses, not a driver. The spotter should be able to effectively send these signals and the operator should understand them. Now, it never hurts for the driver operator team to practice ahead of time at the start of a shift or activity. The use of a spotter and hand signals can greatly reduce the risk of a safety incident. Give the spotter and forklift enough distance to work safely. While forklift drivers should give the right of way to pedestrians, do not assume that you've been seen or acknowledged. The driver should indicate that you've been seen. If you're unsure, give the forklift plenty of space to maneuver until the walkway is clear for you to cross. Now, while forklifts are designed to stop slowly to maintain stability, the stop can still be sudden or unexpected. A best practice is to stand clear of forklifts in general, but especially while they're energized. A forklift, like any vehicle, has blind spots. Now, the main risks are when forklifts are carrying a load, making a turn, or while operating in reverse. Again, it's best to stand clear while in use, but be aware that these blind spots pose the most risk of being struck by a forklift. The forklift also has a unique swing radius. If a pedestrian is crossing and is unaware of the swing radius, it's possible that the person could be within striking distance. The safest practice is to use pedestrian walkways, which should be marked. If your area does not have designated walkways, then stick to one side of the equipment aisle. Having some predictability of where pedestrians will be is another strategy that can increase safety. Always stay aware of your surroundings and never use your cell phone or other device that steals your attention while walking around maneuvering forklifts. Do not ride or stand on forklifts. Unless it is a forklift designed for a passenger, only the driver should be in or on the forklift. Do not sit on the sides of the forklift while it's being operated and never ride on the forks or use the forks to be lifted. Likewise, do not pass under a raised lift or load. These best practices will ensure both drivers and pedestrians remain safe while occupying the same workspace. OSHA has clear safety standards regarding forklift operation and pedestrian safety. The best safety practices are proactive measures, clearly marked obstruction-free permanent aisles or passageways for forklifts can greatly reduce confusion and risk. This can ensure that pedestrians are separated from forklifts. Designating pathways for pedestrians is an additional measure to increase safety. These pathways can become more secure with a protective barrier between the pedestrian walkway and the forklift passageways. However, if a barrier is not possible, clearly marking the spaces with striping on the floor can also be effective. If neither option is possible, then allowing for adequate walking space on either side of the pathways should be observed. Think about your own work environment. How do you know where pedestrians should walk to avoid collisions with a forklift? How is other traffic handled? If you're unsure, now is a good time to ask your supervisor for guidance. Additional support can be provided by installing mirrors at blind spots and corners for forklift drivers, posting signs to control traffic, enforce speed limits, or provide operational warnings is a good proactive measure. Good signs to post include 
caution, danger, and warning signs. A no pedestrian sign. Signs reminding operators where to sound their horn and signs reminding operators where pedestrian crossings are likely and where reducing their speed is important. Passengers are never allowed on forklifts due to the risk of falling. Unauthorized personnel are prohibited from riding or operating a forklift. Only qualified certified personnel should be permitted to ride or operate a forklift. Passengers cannot be transported on the forks, on a platform, or on the side of the forklift. Operators must also keep their distance from other workers and pedestrians in order to avoid a striking incident. Best practices are enforced by OSHA standards, such as alerting others to the movements of a forklift with the use of a horn, hand signals, and warning lights. Cell phone use is prohibited while operating a forklift or when walking in an area with forklifts in use. It's important for both forklift drivers and pedestrians to always remain aware of their surroundings. And while pedestrians have the right of way, that doesn't mean ignoring posted signs, crossing into the pathways of moving forklifts, or becoming distracted with your cell phone while in a working area. There are safety measures that can be taken from both sides, driver and pedestrian. The driver should maintain a low speed, announce directions at intersections or blind spots, and use a spotter for crowded zones or areas with heavy pedestrian traffic. To support the driver's safety measures, pedestrians must do their part. Pedestrians should give forklifts room to operate, stick to marked walkways when possible, and respect the safety guidelines of the forklift. Do not ask for rides on the sides or forks and never pass beneath a load. Incident risk will decrease when both parties are focused on safety. Are you ready to do your part?